All right, guys, in this video, I'd like to go over uh, an example of an algebraic word problem that deals with some geometry concepts and, um, and multiple steps. So the problem states that, uh, or it gives us information. It says that the triangle is an equilateral triangle, meaning that all of the sides are exactly the same. And it tells us that the hexagon is a regular hexagon. And regular is a word used in geometry to describe that all the sides are the same also. And sometimes these lines are drawn to, uh, to indicate that the, the sides are the same. Um, the next thing says that the perimeter of the triangle is equal to the perimeter of the square. So this is really where we're going to start off at. I'm going to try to do this one in blue so we can say color coordinated as we go throughout. So when dealing with problems like this, I think starting with words as your equation is really helpful. So I'm just going to try to abbreviate as best I can and say uh, perimeter of triangle equals perimeter of square. And the way that perimeter is found is by adding up all the sides. So I'm going to demonstrate one method for the triangle and show you a different method for the square. But one thing that we could do is we could add up all of these four sides for the perimeter of the triangle. We could say x plus 4 plus x plus 4 plus x plus 4. And now we can um, combine like terms. We have three x's and one, two, three, four is for a total of 12. So this expression that we came up with isn't going to give us an answer. It's going to just, it's the expression that would be used to find the perimeter of the triangle. Um, so now we're going to use a little bit different strategy to find the perimeter of the square. Uh, the concept is the same. We still have to add up all four sides. And the side that we know is that it's x plus 2. So I'm going to only write it once. But because there's four sides, adding repetitively is the same as multiplying. So I'm going to distribute this. I'm going to say there are four sides of x plus 2. Or in other words, we have 4x plus 8. And the clue tells us that the perimeter of the triangle is equal to, so we have this is equal to this. Now, the reason we're doing this in the first place is that we've got three things that we need to find. We have to find x, we have to find a, and we have to find b. By solving these, or by finding these two expressions, we can begin solving for x, which would be our first clue. When having, you have two variables on both sides, or a variable on both sides, it's smart to get rid of the variable first. So now we have 12 equals 4x minus 3x is x plus 8. And then we'll subtract 8 from both sides. And we found that x equals 4, our first clue. Let's see if I can minimize this a little bit. It's a poorly drawn one there. And we'll move this over. We're going to need some more space. But we found our first clue. We can put a check mark in our box. We found, based on the information given, we found what x is. So now we're going to take the next one, maybe a different color here. Let's start with green this time. And we know that the perimeter of the hexagon is 12 times the value of x. So let's start with words again. Perimeter of the hexagon, I'll draw my best mini hexagon, is equal to 12 times x. But we just found what x is. x is no longer a mystery. x is 4. So 12 times 4 is 48. Now we just have to find the perimeter of the hexagon. And we just went over two different strategies. We could go through and add up all the sides. 1 half a plus 1 half, 1 half a plus 1 half, and repeat this process all the way around. But as you can imagine, this gets kind of time consuming, and I hope you can kind of see the advantage of a distributive property. We'd have to add these fractions six times, and I think it would be much easier to just distribute the six sides times one half a plus one half. This is one side of the um, hexagon times six. When we distribute, we get six halves, or three a, and six a half of six is another three. But now we've got a, another equation that we can solve, um, hopefully, pretty quickly. Minus 3 on both sides. Now we have 3a equals 45. 
and we're going to divide both sides by 3 and this tells us that a is 15 so I'm going to do a better job last time I didn't really circle my x value I'm going to do that so a is 15 x is 4 we found the second clue and a, a, just a side bit of advice would be that when dealing with these word problems, try not to get overwhelmed by the all the components of it. The best thing about math is that you just take it one step at a time and you end up arriving at an answer. So we're going to try the, the same thing for part three. The Oh, this one in pink. This one says that the area of the rectangle is the same as the area of the square. So I'm going to do the same thing with words. Area, rectangle equals area of the square. So to find the area, we multiply the base times the height or length times the width or side times the side. But in here, we didn't know what x was. But now we found that x is 4. So this is no longer a mystery. This side is 4 plus 2. And this side is 4 plus 2. So we're going to do 6 times 6. We know that the area of this square is... 36. And the area of the rectangle is side times side also. We didn't we don't know what a and b is initially, but based on the clue from the previous problem, we found that a is 15. So we're going to do 15 minus 6 to let us know that this side length is worth 9. But we still don't know what b is. So what we're going to have to do for the area of the rectangle is multiply the side 9 times the side b plus 6. And this equals the same area as this one, which is 36. We'll now distribute the two. So you get 9 times b is 9b plus 9 times 6 is 54. And this equals 36. Uh, we would then subtract the constant, 54. You get 9b equals negative uh, 18. Now, we didn't have to distribute here. That might be something for another video. We could have divided both sides by 9 first. But some people feel comfortable with distribution, so I'm going to show it this way. And uh, we'll finally divide by 9. 9 divided by 9 would be 1b, or just b. Divide this side by 9. Negative 18 divided by 9 is negative 2. And we found all three clues. And we should go back and check, but I'm just going to do a mini check right here. I know that the area of this was supposed to be 36. I know for certain that this side was 15, so a min or 15 minus 6, which gave us 9. But if I plugged in negative 2, because this seems sort of like a fishy answer, like why is negative? If you plugged in negative 2 plus 6 here, you'd get 4. And I know that 4 times this 9 would give you an area of 36. So we did everything properly. Uh, the best advice I would give you in, in this is to try to take it one step at a time. Try not to get overwhelmed. And uh, start your equations with some words. And then begin filling in the numbers afterwards. So uh, I hope this video helps. And best of luck.